Hey guys, Proper English here, and today we're going to take a look at the data transfer system that I've designed for the GPU. Now, one of the big issues to overcome with building this GPU is moving lots of data around very quickly, because remember, we're dealing with images, and images are big, so it's a lot of data to move, and if I can't move it quickly, the GPU performance is going to suffer. And so what I've done is figured out a way to move these images very efficiently, and that's what we're going to take a look at today. Now, I've got two big blocks over here. These are two different types of RAM, and these are special types of RAM that I've designed specifically for this data transfer process. We're going to take a look at the individual cells a little bit later, but for now, let's take a look at the whole process in action. All right, so what I've done here is I've saved an image into the top layer of this RAM. And if I press this button over here, the data will come streaming out of the side. Okay, so this is the output, and this is the serial transfer part of the system. So we're sending multiple bits of information down individual lines, and all of that information comes over here to some registers beneath this RAM. And so now what we can do is we can fly up here and we can save that image all at once into any layer of this RAM and then we can display it with a read. And I'll show you that right now in this top layer, we've got nothing saved. When I read, nothing shows up on the screen. But to show you how fast this happens, all I have to do is flick this lever, I can read it, and there's our data. All right, so that is, that's ridiculous. We're saving 64 bits of information all at once, and we get our creeper face showing up on the screen. So I'm ecstatic with how this turned out because this is going to allow the GPU to function at a very high level. It's, it's pretty cool. So let's take a look at how all of this works. All right, so we're going to focus on these two memory cells over here. We're not going to worry about the serial stuff today. We'll save that for another video because it really deserves its own tutorial. Now, the way this memory works is pretty simple. It's very standard. The thing that makes it a bit more special is how the data input and output are set up. And so let's take a look at the inner workings of this cell over here. I'm using a repeater lock memory cell in here, and we've got a read over here controlling whether or not the output is on. And so right now, we've saved this repeater in an on state, but when we save this in an on state, it actually means we're saving a zero because I've inverted the input and the output over here. So now, if I read, what happens is this torch turns off, and that turns the power for this line off, except we're still getting power over here from the memory cell, and this torch remains off, we output a zero. But now, I can come over here and turn the read off. Let's come down here, turn our input on. So now we're sending an off signal up through this data input. And so when I save that to the memory cell, we've got this repeater off. Now, if I turn the read on, we see that our output is on because this torch is now off. This torch can come on because the repeater from the memory cell is off. And that's how this works. Let's take a look at the way I've set this up and why this memory is special. All right, so what I've got here is a bunch of cells stacked on top of each other, and this allows us to see how they interact. So we've got both our data input and our output set up in a column, all right? And each column affects one pixel we've got an individual input for each column, all right? So what that means is that we can save an entire screen's worth of data all at once. So I've set up the inputs down here so that this one and this one are on, this one and this one are off. And what we can do is we can come over here, we'll save it to this lower layer, and then we can read it, and you can see that our output over here, these guys are off, these guys are on. And there you go, it's that straightforward. The thing that was tricky was just getting it to be this compact with this spiral busing. And, uh, and yeah, once I realized that I should uh, 
go back in time and use spiral busing instead of glowstone busing, it really wasn't all that bad. And uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the other cell and how it's different. Now the cell I just showed you was designed to output to a screen. This cell is designed a bit differently. This one is designed to output in serial. All right, so it uses the same sort of logic, right? We've got our repeater lock memory cell over here and our read over here, except now we're reading out this way. All right, so let's save some data down here. We'll flip this guy on, and actually I need a lever over here. Save that, I think we already had an off state in this repeater, so I didn't need to actually save anything. But let's come over here, and we'll flip this guy on. And so we can see that our read is on. All right, so we've got a repeater over here because that's part of the serial. We'll see how that works in another tutorial, but basically, that's it. This is set up so that it outputs over this way, and you'll understand a bit more about how the serial works when we cover that at a later time. But yeah, with these memory cells, I'm going to be able to move data very quickly, and that is really at the core of how the performance of this GPU is going to go. If data moves slowly, it's not going to work very well. If it can move fast, it's going to be awesome. And so, it can move fast, this GPU is going to be awesome. Hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time.